just, I really, you ever heard of the Lord's Prayer? Yes. You ever heard of the Lord's Prayer? I have too. But, but have you ever heard, you ever heard of this in Peter? It says you're a holy nation, a royal priesthood, peculiar people. You ever heard that one? You ever heard a verse in Ephesians that says, Ephesians says you've been made alive with Christ? It says you've been, you're going to be seated with him? Or does it say you are seated with him? Are. How many like knowing that they are? It says you are holy, a holy, that's first, is that first Peter 2, 9 or something like that? If you can have that, put it up there. But I, I'm just going to bounce here for a minute a little because I think in a world that we live in, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of ups and downs, back and forth. Is there not? A lot of things going on. And, and I think sometimes in our journey, as Christians or as people, this is no condemnation thing. A lot of times our motivation is we want the whole, just like the Bible says, we want the whole world to be saved. We want the whole world to know who Jesus is and, and, the, and this love and this grace and this peace. And I think a lot of times what happens is our motives are over the top, but sometimes our methods, our methods and I'm not picking on methods, so don't hear me pick up here. But, and I think sometimes, and I had, to, you know, as I traveled and go and, and, and have been around, you know, you get out of the little bubble, little circle, you, you realize there's a, whole lot of, there's a whole other world out there. People have different idea, ideas, and people live differently. People, you know, do things. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we still have the same Jesus. The same Jesus, the same, the same, the same anointing, the same salvation and I think a lot of times in our journey as Christians is we want people just to, to get the ticket, to get the ticket for heaven. And I think that's good. But then what happens as Christians, we just think we, now I say, then a lot of times people, I'm going to say you, but we take our hands off everything else. And we just get, and we're just say we're just going to ride that out till he comes. But yet it says we're a holy nation, a peculiar people, a, a, a royal priesthood. And I know that sounds really strange, but you know what a royal priesthood is? It means you've been given the authority and the power to govern and to do. He's not looking for people just to come sit with him. He's looking for people to, to, to take that unfading, uncorruptible inheritance and apply it to life that we live in here and now, to the world around us and the world we live in. It says, you, are, you, you know what? You are chosen. Isn't that, make, that, that means you're important. You're sitting in this room today. Whatever you are, wherever, you've been chosen. God, guess what? God in, God in Jesus chooses you every time. Chooses you. A, a generation, and we could go generation, generation. He's talking to these people. And Peter, he's telling these people, he said, listen, man, you're God, you're, God, th God says you're it. You're it. You're it. And sometimes we think, well, you know, a lot of times I find in salvation, how many know, you know, we, salvation is what changes everything. One, that one that one word has, is not a future, distant, far off thing. Salvation is a present, now reality of deliverance and protection and life. Not way down the road, but it's a present reality that's been given to us now. Salvation is an amazing gift, a miracle that changes how we walk and do. And it's not something that should be pressure. It should be something that we, that we receive and allow and allow that love and that grace to minister to our hearts in such a way that we, that we change the narrative on how we live. Make sense? But a lot of times with salvation, we spend more time, well, I'm, or I've been to people, they're, they're disqualified. They disqualify themselves. Well, I haven't been to church. They disqualify themselves. I'm not good enough. Or how about this one? I've messed up too much. Or I'm too much of a mess. How many are messed up? And I'm not picking on that, but, 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 realize, but realize this. Our job as believers and Christians isn't to point out everybody's mess ups. It's to point them and not to fix them. It's, a, it's to love them and embrace them and keep pointing them to Jesus because that message always and will continue forever and eternity continue to work in people's lives. That's what works in people's lives is Jesus plus nothing equals everything. And, and, and showing people, yep, and all their nastiness, you know, it says, arise and shine for the light has come. Isn't that good news? And then right after, it says, there's darkness. There's great darkness. <gasps> we spend more time focused on the darkness, but we miss on the part that says, arise and shine. Peter walks on the water. We spend, well, he sunk. He sank. 
said, you missed the point. He walked on the water. He said, Jesus, is that you? Yep, if it is, tell me to come. What's he do? He didn't turn around all the other guys and say, hey, we need to have a board meeting. He said, Jesus said, that's Je guess what? That's Jesus. I'm getting up and I'm going. And he walked on the water. And I believe this, that you and I in Christ have already been given everything we need for life and God. And walking on water isn't the issue because you already are walking on the water. And the more you see you're walking on water, you will rise and you will rise to the occasion and live. Not, not going, God, don't you care? God, don't you care? You'll be going, no. He's given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. I've been chosen in him. I'm a royal and I'm holy. And he's been giving me the authority to govern and to lead with his anointing, his power and his strength, his, and his gifting, his talent. That, that, that come from a relationship with the Father. <laughs> Amen. What am I telling you this morning? We're, we are more than, this heaven, this earth is more than, is more than just a waiting, emergency waiting room waiting to get to heaven. I say that again. It's not a hospice place waiting for us to show our ticket. You know what I'm talking about? We sit in the waiting room. Why didn't I come? We only ever been in the waiting room? That's a long time, isn't it? And everybody's case is more important than the other. Maybe. Or maybe not. But to you it is. But what if I told you there's more to life to live than just seeing yourself in the emergency room, a hospice room on earth waiting for heaven to show up? Because Matthew, I've been captivated with Matthew chapter 6 because he says, he tells you to, it tells you, let heaven show up in earth. May it, be, may it be what's in heaven, let it be in earth. And I would say it this way, let the system of heaven show up in your earth. And quit, folk, and quit living by the, the earth system and let's start living by heaven's system. And let it show up. Not throwing our hands off, getting off. Well, it's just, I'm not, I'm just, no. Loving and embracing people is a big thing. See, but seeing that you're also chosen is a big thing. Seeing that salvation isn't, it's not something to disqualify. You've been qualified when you believe in Jesus. You've been qualified. Isn't that good news? How many felt unqualified? How many times in our, I'm going to tell you, in the camp that I came to, like grew up in, I went to church a lot of times, went to the altar in front to get saved again, over and over again, because I messed up that week. And then I, and now I'm not saying it sounds goofy. It made it, oh, it, it was emotionally, and it was great, and it was wonderful. But then I was always telling God, God, I'll, I'll do it this time. I won't mess up. I'll keep the course. I'll keep the, da -da 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 -da. I'll keep the course. Only to find out, God, try to make up another plan. I wouldn't even, church wouldn't, we'd be done with church that night. Before that night was over, already done, messed it up. Oh, don't shout me down there. Don't shout me down there. But, what I, but, I, but a part of that camp is what I learned is it says he's able to save to the uttermost. Hebrews chapter 7. And then I get to learn that he was a once for all paid for our sins. It says I'm accepted into beloved in Ephesians chapter 1. I learned that a lot of people we need to see that, that, that there's an acceptance in the beloved that he loves me just as much as he loves Jesus. Ooh. Did you say that? You're darn tootin' I did. And the more that you become aware and understand, it changes how you govern and how you live and how you do. You start seeing yourself as a holy set-apart nation that has a whole different way of governing because I'm going by heaven's system and living by heaven's system, not by earth, the earth system of doom and gloom. I'm going to rise and shine. What's that mean? I'm going to stand up, and, I'm gonna, and, and I think God's looking for more people that will stand up with some certainty and some confidence and live this journey knowing that, it, how, how do I say this? Heaven you weren't built for heaven. Heaven was built for you. I'll say that again. You weren't built for heaven, but heaven was built for you. Isn't that awesome? And that might sound like, woo, 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 woo. But when we begin to see the life we've been given, the life that's been given to us, not just throwing up our hands and not getting involved, it's seeing that there's a community out there of people that need to be loved. There's, a, there's people out there that need to be embraced. There's people going through some stuff that need some encouragement. There's some things that are, people are on the Titanic Going down, oh, just throw your hands up. No, we are people that can bring hope to a sinking ship. We're people that can bring life to people that, that feel like they've been railroaded and run over and lot, you know, whoa, we, oh, whoa. I'm going to go over here. You know, da 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 You know that one. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da-da-da. You know how that works? 
But I'm here to tell you, it's more life than recognizing the tune of what the tune of the doom. It's starting to recognize that I'm a chosen generation. I'm a royal, I'm a royal priest. And the royal priesthood, do you understand the power of priesthood? Each one of us is a priest in Christ. What's that mean? The priest, the priest was the one that declared you clean and worthy and good. And he says, you know what? I've given you that authority to declare and to speak. But I'm not, I've given you my authority to govern and to rule, to allow heaven to show up in your earth. Allow the system of heaven. I've given you the tools of heaven at your disposal. I would say it this way. Let's make use of all the stuff that he's given to us. He's given us eternal life. He's given us love and hope and peace. He's given us grace and mercy. He's given us, he's given us righteousness, not just a righteousness out of a Cracker Jack box. He gave us his righteousness that comes made by G-O-D. He says, walk, put that, what does it say? Put a helmet of salvation on. Walk in that truth. Put the belt of truth on. Breastplate of righteousness. Take up that shield of faith. What's that mean? Take up that faith, having confidence that Jesus is everything he says he is. See, the difference I've learned between heaven's system and earth's system is heaven's system is I'm going to trust on all that Jesus did for me. Death, burial, and resurrection. I'm going to trust that it was his death and burial. His, his death was my death. His resurrection was my resurrection. It's the resurrection power. That salvation. That I'm a brand new person. I've been, watch that. And Ephesians says, you were made alive. That means you were dead. Don't shut me down on that one. But you've been made spiritually alive. And all of heaven's resources have been put at your disposal. Not because he feels bad for you, but because he's chosen you and believes you to be a son and a daughter and wants you to see that you are a son and a daughter. So we're always, you know, God's in control. Don't pick me up on that. He is in control, but he's also given you and me and some authority to do some stuff here. What's, what's, Roman, what's it say there? Romans 5, 17, who, he who would, this is my favorite, he who would uh, receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness would just barely get by. Just show up to church on Sunday. What's it say? Anybody know? Hmm? We'll rule and reign in life. That might sound a little arrogant to some. But it also says in, in Corinthians that God chose the fullest things of this world to, to mess things up. What's the foolishness? That a man would die on a cross and pay for your sins and resurrect three days later and justify you and redeem you and make, and, and make all things new. Think about that. And adopt you as some, something you could never do on your own. He said, I'll do it for you. See, the, earth, the earth's way of doing, the earth system is, you got to trust in yourself. And I'm not saying there's good people out there do good things, make good, they make good things, but it's never going to give them eternal life. It's never going to give them abundant life. It's never going to give them, it might give them a moment, but it won't give them eternity. And, and I've learned in the earth system of trusting yourself, it's never enough. Envy shows up, jealousy shows up, pride shows up. We can't be happy if somebody's doing good. You know, the envy is, it's not just that your jealousy, you just want what they got. Envy comes on and says, they're doing good, but I don't want them to do good, so I'm going to do everything I can do to, despite, to, to tear out what they're doing because it eats you up that you can't see somebody else doing good. And I think that's a sad, that's a sad day, especially in believers, because that's not the kingdom we live from and, and, and operate from. We don't operate from there. We operate from a kingdom that says God loves you just as much as he loves me. We operate from a kingdom that says no matter what I'm going through, guess what? He's right there with me. What's that, John 16, 33? You ever heard of that one? I don't, I don't know. Let's, let's check that one out. We doing all right? Make use of. I guess I'm saying let's stop sidelining the, the earth that we live in. But let's allow heaven to show up in this earth. Our, we're, how we're living and how we're doing. Let's make use of what keeps us. It says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I come to do what? Just get you by? Just to help you out. Just to make you feel good. Get some hair on your goosebumps on your arm. So I come that you may have life. What kind of life? What kind? Abundant. All oh, preacher. That's that feel good stuff again. It does feel good. And I find, I've just learned this. When I start feeling good, I, I live life a little better. When I got a little hip in my hop, I'm a little more excited to be around. I've been around, I've been around people that ain't very excited. 
Woe is me. You ever heard that? Woe is me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about a little bit of gratitude? How many here like gratitude? Gratitude changed the whole atmosphere or something. Oh, as children of God and, as a, and, and, and with heaven, we can live with some gratitude. Oh, don't shout me down. These things I have spoken to you. He's getting ready to tell him. He's getting ready to go. Getting ready to go. He's telling him about what was getting ready to happen. That, now watch this. That in me, you may have peace. That in me, here's what he tells them. In me, guess what? I've told you a lot of this stuff's going to happen. It's coming. But I want you to, in me, have some peace. Have some peace. How many like peace? How many just, we need some spiritual peace, some mental peace, some emotional peace, some physical peace. We need peace. You ever, I got peace like a river. Peace. Okay. Now. They may have peace in the world. Oh, boy. In the world, you will have tribulation. Well, that's really exciting. Anybody want to hear that one? In the world, some stuff's not going to go so well. Oh. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He doesn't say be of good cheer that you're going through some tribulation. Be of good cheer because in, you, in him you have peace. And I'll even say it this way. This really helps me. It says, it says that I am, he, is, he has overcome the world, and we keep, we've learned now through salvation that you and I are in Christ, and Christ is in us. So if he is an overcomer, guess what? I am in him, and he is in me. I am an overcomer, not because I'm trying to be, I already am, and I'm going to be of good cheer. If that's going to bring some good cheer into my journey, I'm not going to go all... I'm not going to start going good cheer because I'm going through some stuff. No, I'm going to know that he's my peace, and I can be of good cheer. That's what makes the difference. That's heaven showing up in your earth. Because the world's got all kinds of tribulations, ungrateful, no gratitude, and we want to blame. God, where are you? God, where are you? Remember that story about the boat? Don't you care? Don't you care? You know what I think part of that story is? We see that he rebuked the storm. He did all this. I'm going to pick on it. But I think there was, there was, why do you take so little when you've been given so much that he'd been discipling and showing them that the same authority and power he, that he, he had, that he, they could have just as well. Didn't need to wait for Jesus to get up to rebuke the storm that they could have done it themselves. And I know that might sound a little goofy, but you and I are new creations in Christ Jesus that have been given authority and dominion in and through Christ Jesus that can declare some things and speak some things and do some things a whole lot different than the earth can do. Oh, don't shout me down. Because the earth system is do it yourself. The heaven system is it's in Christ you live and move and have your being. He's the way, the truth, the life. He is, now watch this in Corinthians, in Corinthians it says, the power, Jesus is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Isn't that amazing? The power of God. Jesus, what's Romans, what's Romans 1, 14, 15, 16? That, that I'm not ashamed of this gospel. I'm not ashamed of this good news because it's that good news. It's, it is, that's where the salvation comes from. In that message, that is where salvation is found. The power of salvation shows up from the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And the more that it shows up in your life, the more you see heaven isn't something that's so far distant off, which I'm not saying is not there, but what I'm saying, heaven is right here and right now in the midst of this earth, and this planet is more than a hospice emergency room that we can get involved in things around us and we can be an influence, not because we think we're better than everyone, because we know what this does to our heart and to the people around us. It sets, it, it sets the, the captives free, the blind can see, the lame can walk. Isn't that good news? People in here, people need some peace. How many people do you know that don't have peace? They're looking for peace. They find it in all kinds of things. Shooting it up, drinking it down, doing this, doing this. They're looking for peace and they just say, hey, if you just receive my peace, it doesn't cost you nothing. It doesn't cost you nothing. It's free. And it lasts forever. Don't shout me down on that one. Don't shout me down. We doing Okay. What I'm trying to say, this, this Christian life we've been given is more than a ticket to heaven. It's more than a ticket to heaven. Whew. It's more than I'm just going to take my hands off, get off the ship, take my hands off. I'm a Christian. I'm a, no, I'm a, I want my life to live, be in such a way that we impact things around and what we do. You know, you ever heard of Daniel in the lion's den? I like that dude. Not because his name's Daniel. I like that dude. But you know, it says there in, in Daniel that he was, he was flawless and everything he did, everything he did was to the utmost 
the best of the best. But yet there's a bunch of dudes that didn't like that. So they set out to legislate some law to take him out of the picture. And you know what? We all, oh, but did they do it? They legislate some law. He gets thrown in the lion's den. Now, did he get thrown in the lion's den because he was being a bad dude? He was messing things up. He was going around beating people up. He, he got thrown in the lion's den because he was going and praying. Because he was living. But he did it in such a way that they couldn't watch this. They couldn't find anything wrong with him. He lived in such a way. But what I'm saying, even when he went into the lion's den, what I'm trying to say, it wasn't just taken away from him. In the midst of that, God showed up in the lion's den and protected him. What I'm trying to say is sometimes in life things are going on. Just because you're going through some stuff doesn't mean God's not there. Keep, even though you might be doing things that are, you know, in Christ you're flawless. In Christ there's nothing wrong with you. But yet there's going to be people that are going to try to legislate some things to run you out of town and to run you out of this and to point this to that. Hey, don't be okay with that. Keep the relationship because, you know, the relationship that mattered was his relationship with the king. That's what mattered. And the king even said when it was going to happen, he couldn't change anything the way the rules were made up. But the king honored David, and David honored him, and they had a relationship. And I'm just throwing this out here, this sideline. But it always amazed me that when he went, he went in, how, most of us would say we don't want to go in the lion's den, amen? But he went through that lion. He was in that lion's den, but yet God showed up, the angel showed up, and shut the mouths of the lion. What was meant to destroy them, it was right. Now think, can you imagine sitting there, look at that lion? He didn't go, oh, the mouth shut. It's not working. I'm sure he was sitting there going, hmm. I don't know really, I'm, I'm not going to, don't put me in a, I was just with some dead gators and I wasn't very, 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 very uh, confident in my, and I could, I could do a lot of things. He's put in a, den, a put in some place where they're going to eat him. Imagine, you'd be, you'd be, that'd, that'd fix anybody's prayer life, wouldn't it? <laughs> Would it not? All I'm saying is, and look what happened, that whole thing, God turned around. He didn't sit there and go, God, he didn't say, God, where are you? He didn't start blaming God. How many of us have done this? I've been to church. I've been good. I've been. I wore my green shirt today. I wore my blue shirt today. I read my Bible today. I prayed today. I did this today. I gave. I did. And there. Blah, 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 blah. He didn't say any of that. We that we see. We just see that he was faultless and did nothing wrong. And some people didn't like it, and they tried to take him out. But God still honored him. Why? Because he kept honoring God. And then. What was meant to destroy, it, it, I just think that's an amazing story. For whatever, the amazing part for me is he went through some stuff. But he was still delivered from it. And it was right there in front of him. And I think sometimes when we read, well, look at, boy, them guys are awesome, man, showing up in all these places. When you read back in, in John 16, 33, where it says, be of good cheer. For I've overcome the world. There's going to be some stuff going on, but be of good cheer. I think a lot of times the way we go at things and the way we handle things makes a big difference. And like I said, our motivations in life, our motivation are to help people, but sometimes our methods are zero. I want you to receive this salvation. And right before you do, you pick up a big stick. Now, God loves you. Boom. Boom. And then you sit there and go, man, God loves you. I'm just, it's okay. And we, but we do that to them emotionally and spiritually because we, we try to beat them up like, you're spiritually ignorant. Not, I'm saying, you don't know, you don't know that verse, or you don't know this song, or you don't know this preacher, or you don't know this, and they're spiritually getting beat up, but yet you're trying your motivation. Oh, I'm sorry, Brother Jim, are we doing all right? And we're trying but how many here have been that way? Man, you are now. You're good. But how many times what I'm saying is, or I'm gonna go give you something, tell you how good it is. Hey, this is a nice steak, nice water. And right before they go to give to them, you throw it in their face. Your motive, your motives was to help them, but the methods were a zero. And what happens? What, anyhow, that's what we're going to say about that. We need to get ready to go home. We doing okay? We doing okay? Yeah. All I'm trying to get you to see: Is there a system that's been given to us from heaven? Yes, there is. It's not just a location; it's a system in which we can govern and live from. Are you chosen in Christ? Yes, you are. Are you royal? Are you set apart? What does it mean? You're set apart. There's something different about you. You've been made different. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things have passed away. Oh, that's great news. That's great news. Amen? The earth system, I'm not going to trust in that system. It isn't going to get me anywhere. Oh, okay. Let's keep it spiritual then. Let's go to Proverbs. We'll 
Man, I still haven't got to Matthew. We might not get there. Yeah, let me do that. Let me read. Can I read Matthew chapter 6 for a minute? We're going to change the direction a little bit. It says here, and when you pray, this is verse 5, and I'm going to go down to 13. It says, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. So why are they praying? There's some people out there just do things to be seen. Jesus said, there's people that just do, telling these, telling these religious people, they're just doing things to be seen. He said, don't be like them. He says, as surely I say to you, they have no reward. But when you pray, go into your room and, when you, and, and have shut the door. Pray to your father who, who, who is in the secret place. And your father who sees you in the secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain reputations as the heathen do, for they think they will be heard for their, for their many words. And I think what part of that when you want to say is when you go to pray, when it says go, don't, and some people will go home and find a closet. If you need to go find a closet, uh, that's okay. Go find a closet. But what I'm trying to say, sometimes we just need to sit down with him and him with us. Slow down. Don't get out in front of people. Do home, but just to be seen so God will see you like he's in some little spot to see you. What he's trying to say is slow down and realize this is relational between you and him. This is relational between you and him, not everybody else on the planet. And you just need, you ever, have, you ever sit down with, I'm going to say, you ever sit down with yourself on the inside and reflected on some things? Or done some things? What he's saying is slow down and do this. It's between you and God. That relationship isn't between you and God and Dan. Is it between you and God and, and Brother Jim? Is it between you and God and PJ? We might encourage and build each other, but the relationship is between you and God, and that's the that's relationship that, that we want to focus on here. And when you're praying, don't go around doing a whole bunch of things so people will see you and think you're important. Oh, he's really spiritual. The spiritual, nobody knows you're really spiritual, only but God. He knows your heart. Make sense? I'm just picking. Then he goes on and it says here, uh, uh, don't worry, don't just keep repeating words over and over and over and over again thinking that's going to sound really good. He says, therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask him. What's he saying? God already knows what's going on. He just wants you to slow down and have some conversation with him, commune with him. He knows what's going on. But you're so wrapped up in being so busy in the world and throwing out a bunch of things and making sure everybody is seeing you as holy as important and praying and doing. He goes, you're missing the point to sit down and just hang out with him. He knows what you need. Just hang out with him. Slow down. Take a deep breath. Whew. And in this manner, therefore pray. You ever heard this prayer? And I could, you know, some people tell you not to pray. It's part of the old, oh, we're not going to go there today. I just want to tell you, I want to get some principles out of this. this there's some point, insight. He prays, our Father in heaven. Whew. Beat them up. Run them over. Point out their flaws. What does he say? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And one thing I've learned, if you read throughout the Bible, throughout history, we have all different names of God. Do we not? And Jesus talks, the word that he gives for God He's my dad. He says, when you pray, I want you to pray like I pray. I call him dad. It's personal. Now, some of you might go, ooh, but what I want you to see here is he's giving you a picture that any, 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 every and any description of God can be wrapped up in one word, father, dad. Did you hear me? Every and every word that could be wrapped up can be wrapped up in that one word. You can call him father. How do I know? Because Jesus said, when you pray, this is how I want you to pray. I want you to talk to him just like I talk to him. Dad, I'm slowing down. Hear that today. You're chosen. You're royal. You're holy. He doesn't look at, oh, Godeth, the fathereth. Thou callest, calleth, I am Daneth. And I'm not against that. What he's saying is he understands PJ. He understands Dave. He understands you. He understands you and you and you and you. What he's wanting you is don't be doing it for show. Don't be afraid. Just come and sit down wherever it is. Sit down and hang out with him. 
and know that you can call him father. You can call him dad. You, what, what's, that, what's that tell me? That he is approachable. He is someone that you can approach and you can talk to and you can visit with. That wants you to come and hang out with him. He doesn't say, did you get it right? Now you can come hang out with me. You hear that? So the first thing he does, our father, who are, he tells him, he calls him dad. And then he says, how would be that name? What are you saying? My dad, he's pretty awesome. He's pretty awesome. I want you to see when you pray, he's my dad and he's a good dad and he's pretty awesome. Celebrate him. Honor him. How, how would be his name? Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Woo. He wants what's up there to come down here. Did you hear that? He wants what's up there, or wherever there it is, to come into here. Hear that? What's up there? He wants to come here. Did you hear that? It's more, I'm, I'm saying it again because it's not, it's not the hospice emergency room or ticket we got, we're waiting for. It's what's there to come into your heart and into your life. Amen? Amen? Okay. We might, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Oh, we've heard a lot of that one over the years, haven't we? God, if it be thy will. You know, one of the words for will that always has helped me, and Jimmy talked this very well for several weeks, is that on Wednesday night he talked that it's one of God's will, one of the best ways, it's God's character. God, let your character show up in this place. God, let your character. How many like character? How do we know his character? Does he love you? Does he care for you? Is he all about you? Did he pay a price that no one else would pay? He's done all those things. His character. I will that none perish. I will remember your sins and beat the tar out of you and, and throw you around all day long and drag it out. I'll give you cancers and tumors and make your life miserable. Is that what it says? No. My character is that none perish, but that all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I think he's looking for some people and some Christians that will stand up and say, my daddy's character is that he loves you and he cares for you and he's redeemed you and he's paid a price and he's healed you and made you whole and he wants you to embrace that abundant life now, today, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Woo, 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 woo. And then it goes on here. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Woo. Give us this day our daily bread. Who's our daily bread? For any of those Christians, know, well, all of us know that Jesus, Jesus is the bread of life. Amen? Our daily bread. We can say there through after the cross, who's the bread of life? That's Jesus. He gives us every day what we need for life and godliness. Isn't that good news? Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Mm, how do we do that? How have our debts been forgiven? Let's say another word. In Jesus, did he provide Did He provide the forgiveness? Did he provide the, the payment of our debts? Yes, he did. And forgive us, and forgive us our debtors as we, you know, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Ooh, ooh. Man, think about that. He provides and pardons. Don't shout me down. How many like that? He provides and pardons. I say it again. He provides and pardons. He provides and pardons. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I don't know about you, my Bible said he's been defeated. Doesn't it say that? He's been defeated. All powers and print. He made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them at the cross. I'll say that again. He made a public spectacle of it. And what I mean by that, when you, in the old Roman day, when they had a, when they defeated something, they paraded them around, they paraded them around, usually naked, down the streets, and humiliated them every way because they were defeated. And he's given us a picture that all powers and principalities have been, that Christ has defeated them. They're stripped naked. They've been paraded around, and they know that they're defeated. And the more that you know that they're defeated, I want you to see the enemy is stripped naked. The only thing that he can do is try to convince you by lying and deceiving to you that, that he is not defeated and that you are not good enough and that you're not qualified. God can't heal you. God won't deliver you. Oh, heaven is way over there. He doesn't want heaven to show up in your world. He's just going to, you're, you're not good enough. You're not qualified. You're not holy. You're not chosen. You're just, you're just, you're just a has-been. No, that's not who my that's not who my daddy says I am. My daddy doesn't. My daddy's an awesome daddy, and he wants what's he wants what's up there to come down here. He wants he wants he wants me to live this life in and through and by him with some strength and some ability and some certainty. You ever like that word assurance? And a lot of Christians, we would do good if we had some confidence and assurance instead of doubt 
in disbelief and unbelief. Oh, don't beat me up. Okay, I won't. Okay. Forgive us our debts and, not, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Isn't that good news? It starts off with he's good and he's awesome. Let's give him all the glory and all the praise at the end. Isn't that awesome? He tells you. You can call him dad. He's your deliverer. He's your provider. He pardons and he makes ways when there is no way. Oh, isn't that awesome? Isn't that, isn't that something to get excited about? And here I'm saying, it's not just hype that you leave your whistle. Oh, you know, I love people when I get, what was church about? I don't know, but it was good. I love that sometimes I'll talk and say, man, church was good today. What's it about? Oh, I don't know. And I don't mean that being pickly. I've done the same thing. But, but let's have some context in our journey. Let's just not just do things to be doing things. Let's embrace the life we've been given in Christ Jesus. See yourself. I know how important it is. Be aware he chose me. Be aware he set me apart. Be aware he, he paid, he, pray, he, he cleansed me and made me white as snow. Oh, I'm accepted in the beloved. He's given me authority and dominion. He's given me a seat with him. Why would I want to give my seat up? I've been made alive. Mm. Mm. It's more than just a ticket. It's more than just a ticket. It's a life to be lived to and be embraced. It's not just when things are going good or the opposite, we, when all the things are bad, we're looking for God. What about, it's, it's yes and yes. Because all the promises of God are yes and amen. 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 Are you an overcomer? Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to trust him even in the midst of my circumstances, even when the railroad's railroaded. Think about that one for a minute. All right. We doing okay? I always tell you we got lots of time. One more verse and we're out of here. Proverbs 24. You ever been there? This is good. This is one of my favorite ones. For some reason, I don't have it in my Bible, though. Matthew, Zechariah, I'm getting there. Matthew 24. There it is. I don't know what verse I'd tell you. 24, 1. Huh. Here's what it says. It says, don't be envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them. For the heart devises violence and their lips, for their heart devises violence and their lips talk trouble of troublemaking. And, and I'm not going to spend much time right there, but there is, there is a world out there that, you know, I had some people, you ever, you ever pray for somebody? Get ready to go. I'm going to say, you ever, you ever say, hey, let's pray. And then you pray and everything that could go wrong goes wrong. And then the next day they don't pray and they don't pray. Maybe you pray at work for everybody and then everything goes wrong that day. Well, the next day they don't pray. They don't say anything about it all going wrong. But the day you don't pray, they'll recognize everything goes right. I'm just throwing that out there. Or they're going to brag or say that. What it's saying is, and I know it sounds funny, but we live life differently, do we not? I believe a believer's life should be completely different than an unbeliever's life. And I'm not picking on that, but a lot of times we see evil people, looks like they're getting ahead and doing things, they're cheating, lying, and stealing, and doing good. It says, don't look at those guys and wonder, well, how come they're getting and I'm being, where's mine? Where's mine? I want my reward. That's not the point that he's sitting here. But anyways, that's just a side note. It says, through wisdom, watch this, through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge the rooms are filled with all the precious and pleasant riches. Then it says here, a wise man is strong. And it goes on here, but it says, through wisdom a house is built. Hear me, everything I've shared with you this morning, it says, Christ is the wisdom of God. Christ is our wisdom. Christ is the power and wisdom of God. And, and I've learned this. How many here got a lot of knowledge? We can throw that around. We got a lot of knowledge. You know, when I was with Bill, they wanted him to get out of the boat and walk up this big slide that these gators came down because there might be one on the other side. He had a lot of knowledge of all of that, but the wisdom kicked in that he better just stay in the boat. You know what I'm saying? Is, and what I call knowledge is knowledge, wisdom is knowledge, but it's the ability to use that knowledge. The ability to use that knowledge. And I believe a lot of times in our journey, we're good. I've said this a lot. We're real good with destroying things, but wisdom builds a house. And I'll close with this as we leave. If we leave, we build our lives. 
we can have all the material that we need, which is good, and we could stack it right here, which is God, but it's learning to the wisdom, learning to have the wisdom to apply that knowledge, to apply, to apply that knowledge and build and build on what's been given to us. And build on and build on and make use of and make use of the gifts and the talents, the anointings. The, the things that he's already given and provided, make use of what and allow heaven to show up on your, in your life. Are you hearing me this morning? I was going to say, wisdom builds. How many like to build? What I'm saying, we, you, don't, don't leave all the material laying there to build a house. You can say, I got, the, I got it all. But I'm going to tell you, there's a lot to wisdom will build it and put it together. And you and I have been given the gift of salvation, the gift of life, have given the Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us into all of this truth. And give us wisdom, how we build, how we respond to things, and how we respond to circumstances, how we do. And wisdom, I, I love this, it says wisdom, wisdom will make you strong. Wisdom will give you strength. Wisdom, and, and what it's saying, wisdom, that's, that's anybody. Everybody that will, will use the wisdom from heaven will, make you, will give you great strength. That when life begins to huff and to puff and to blow, you can say, hey man, I got a good firm sound foundation. When things are going on, I didn't build, I didn't build this house on the, stand, on the sand. I built this house on some solid ground, solid foundation that's been paid for and signed for. And, and, and he gives me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Not for some distant future, but from here today. You know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to get up and I'm leaving this emergency waiting room. And I'm going to get up and I'm going to embrace life. I'm not going to wait, wait for... Wait for the, was it, diagnosis and just live from the diagnosis. And I'm not going to wait for that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get up and I'm going to start to embrace this abundant life. I'm going to embrace this life that I've been given. I'm, gonna, I'm not just going to have some wishful thinking, but my hope is secured and confident in him. I'm going to boldly hold fast to those confessions that he is for me and not against me. When the enemy shows up, I'm going to remind him he's been stripped naked and he's been defeated. And that I'm not trying to be a son or to be somebody. I already am. Our Heavenly Father is awesome. And he's great. And I can sit right down wherever I'm at with him and with me. And we can commune and we can talk. And he gives me all the things. I'm going to say it again. And he gives me that authority to govern and to do. He's waiting for you and me to stand up and start declaring and doing some things different. I'm going to quit complaining. Quit whining. Quit pointing. Quit taking my hands off. I'm going to embrace and get involved and make a difference because he is my strength. He is my hope. He is my life. And it's that truth I'm going to hold on to no matter what. And Jesus, he's looking for people that will stand up and begin to declare that and live that and embrace that in Jesus' name. So thank you for taking, thank you for coming out of your day and setting a time of your day to come together and allow us to break bread with one another. How many want to get out of the emergency room? Not just in the emergency room. How many want to get out of the, how many want to get out of just holding on to a ticket and begin to allow the system of heaven to be more than just a location? And allow what's there to show up in here and around me. How many would like to have some peace? It says it's my peace I give you. Not looking for it, be a receiver of it. Salvation is a gift you can't earn. It's not something you keep, it's what keeps you. Forgiveness isn't something you earn. It's something you've been given that we receive in Jesus. Healing. Do you believe, do you believe God still heals people today? The healing's already been purchased and paid for and provided. It's continually saying, you know what, no matter what it is, I'm going to keep trusting and calling out and relying and standing on the name of Jesus. Didn't Ephesians say when do what you've done, all you do, keep standing? Keep standing. Keep standing. Oh, when tribulations come, I'm going to whine and complain. I'm going to call the preacher day in and day out. Oh, I'm sorry. We're just called Brother Jim. <laughs> you know all about it, don't you? No. What are we going to do? I'm going to be of good cheer, and I'm going to start to sing some hymns and some songs and start feeding myself some words of life and then rightly divide this word. Did you hear rightly divide? It's not opening it up and going, Judas hung himself. Okay, God. And open up and go, oh, go and do likewise. That's not very smart. That's not very wisdom in dividing the word. It's learning to allow the Holy Spirit to unveil, to unveil and to reveal to you this amazing life, this amazing journey, and learning to have wisdom 
that comes from Christ and building and building with wisdom the life and making use of all the resources of heaven, not in our dear future, but our, in our present now. In our present nows. Present nows. I don't need all my bills paid off when I get to heaven. I need some of those things done now. I don't need my car fixed when I get to heaven. I need my car fixed now. I don't need all the debts and all the problems and all the, I don't need all the things with my kids worked out down, down there. I need them worked out now. And it's learning to, uh, but sometimes it's not changing them. It's learning, it's learning to grow and yourself be changed. I'm very quick. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Boy, you guys are tired. You guys are tired. It's the rain. You should go to Louisiana. They got rain coming and going. They got water on this side, water on that side. They got turkey, or they got mosquitoes as big as turkeys. Cockroaches. <laughs> What's that? You didn't leave nothing there? And they eat some weird. We had turtles, something, turtle stew. We had crawfish tail. We had turtle sauce pecan. I don't know what it is. I just prayed for it and ate it. Mm. And we had, anyhow. Take a deep breath. We're not here for show. We're not here for to impress, but to be impressed upon our Heavenly Father. Father, you know the ins and outs in each and every person here today. I, you know how they came in. You know how they'll go out. And, Lord, I pray for over each and every household. I pray over each and every person. Lord, I pray that they continue to allow heaven to impact the entirety of their journey, that the, the, the message of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, that whatever, whatever, whatever area of their life, whatever things they're going through, or whatever things that are happening, that that is the answer. That that is the answer. And I pray that wisdom, your wisdom, the Holy Spirit will begin to lead and guide them into truth with some certainty and with some assurance. That they're not just holding on a ticket, living life like they're in a hospice or in a hospice emergency room, just waiting, waiting for heaven to show up. But that they will see that heaven has already been put at their disposal. That it's a system of how we respond and how we live and how we do and how we see, how we talk, how we pray, how we love. And Lord, I pray that we would make use of all the resources of heaven. That it's unfading. There's inheritance that will never fade away. That's incorruptible, unfading. Lord, help us to learn, to have the wisdom and the knowledge to apply that into all areas of our lives. Lord, I pray for people's hearts. I pray for people's bodies. I pray for people's minds. I pray for for people to, to receive your peace emotionally, spiritually, physically. Lord, I pray for strength. I pray for wisdom to keep them grounded and solid and secure. Lord, I pray that if, if fear is trying to show up or circumstances are trying to show up, that, Lord, that they will know that whenever troubles, they're going to they're gonna be not the good cheer because they're there, but they're going to be solid because it's your peace that is in their lives. Lord, as they leave from here and they go about their week, they go about their days. Lord, I thank you that they're quick and they're sharp and they're bright and they're smart. They're healthy, they're wealthy, and they're wise. They're solid and secure. That salvation isn't something that they're, that they're it, it, hoping stays or works out, but it, that you work all of that in and through their journey. In all of their days, all of their ways, I thank you that your grace is enough for everything. Lord, I thank you for your strength. I thank you for your love. We seal this time up now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen.